Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we've got a bit of a fun news roundup for you. And the first thing that we're going to cover for you today is that there appears to have been some very slight leaks about what we're going to be seeing at Gamescom this year as far as Overwatch is concerned. Now we've spoken about it before but Gamescom is a giant gaming convention in Germany that's held every year in late August. This year it's from the 22nd to the 25th. Now Blizzard have their own Blizzard at Gamescom app which is available on most smartphone platforms. Now the leak part of this story is that the app provides some details for the activities that Blizzard will be running at the upcoming show. Now this is where it gets interesting because some early adopters of the app were able to capture screenshots where it seemed to display that Overwatch will be having a new content reveal at 11.30 on the main stage on Wednesday the 22nd. But since that time, the app has actually been changed a little bit. I myself couldn't even install and download the app today, and this newer source from wowhead.com shows that an Overwatch event is still happening at 11.30 on Wednesday, but most of the descriptive language about what that show is actually about has been removed. Hmm, very interesting. Here's my two cents about this whole little switcheroo. The original description, Overwatch New Content Reveal, does sound very much like, to me, internal descriptive language for Blizzard themselves. They obviously always know what's going on behind the curtain, and perhaps we just got to see behind it a fraction a little bit earlier than they intended. As for what this new content that's apparently going to be revealed at BlizzCon is, that's the million dollar question. It's not too difficult to extrapolate in several directions, because we can look back at what we saw last year at Gamescom and roughly guess what their equivalents would be for this year. Now last year we got Junkertown as well as the cool Junkrat and Roadhog animation which served both as an introduction to the new map and as a slightly lesser form of a lore vehicle for those characters. We also got the full animated short for May which was called Rise and Shine. Now I would not be totally surprised if this year at Gamescom we see similar types of new content announced. There is after all only half an hour booked for the stage show from 11.30 till 12 o'clock. A map trailer, a sweep through, maybe a little animation for it, and a new cinematic, that's probably about 25 minutes. As for who the cinematic could be about, I think most people's bets are either on D.Va or Lucio, although as I said in another video, I'd really like McCree to get sort of a spaghetti western animation, I think that'd be great. The one thing I'm absolutely certain we're not getting is a new hero or anything like that, as not only is it not really on timetable in comparison to previous years, but usually the more hardcore and larger announcements are safe for BlizzCon, which is in November. Now just because what I've described previously is what I think is going to happen, that doesn't mean that there aren't other options that Blizzard could pull out and surprise us all. The game has come in for a little bit of criticism recently for how repetitive some of the ongoing new content has felt, particularly summer games this year. Showing up at Gamescom this year and doing practically exactly the same as they did last year might exacerbate that community feeling a little bit. But the timing of this event being at the end of August, which is roughly the end of summer, does also line up with that other thing that we know is coming, which is a new substantial social feature. Personally, that's what I hope they show here. New maps and cinematics are great, but they don't get the community as hyped as new and interesting ways to play the game. I think Overwatch really needs a social feature which has as much cultural impact as, say, the Horde versus Alliance dynamic from World of Warcraft. I'd be over the moon if they just went, yeah, there's Overwatch, there's Talon, pick one, and the choice that you make will change the way you interact with the game in a variety of cool and interesting ways. Here's Jeff to explain how it all works to you for the next half an hour. And the crowd goes wild. That's what I want to happen. As for whether it will, hmm, maybe it's wishful thinking. Especially as we've just found out recently that Jeff Kaplan isn't even going to be at Gamescom this year. Instead, he's going to be at the Overwatch Fan Festival in Korea, which is actually happening concurrently with Gamescom from August the 22nd to the 23rd. Now this info comes from a post on the Play Overwatch Korea website, which details exactly what Overwatch devs are going to be there, and what events there are for fans to participate in. Jeff Kaplan, Matthew Hawley, Scott Mercer, David Kang and Ben Dai are all going and there's even a breakdown for the Yes24 Live Hall stage event which will be running on the two dates of the 22nd and the 23rd. Of particular note is the Overwatch Content with Developers Deep Dive session on the 22nd which is the same day as the Gamescom reveal. The fact that they're going to talk about that content on stage in Korea does make it even more likely in my mind that at least some of it will be surrounding the very popular character D.Va. That new cinematic is looking ever more likely I feel. But because there's two events happening in different places across the 
world, that might mean that we're getting twice the content. One can only hope, right? There's one thing I'd like you guys to do for me, actually, surrounding the whole subject of new content for Overwatch. I'd like you to put down in the comments section below what exactly is the type of content that gets you the most excited to play the game again. Would you be fine with just another cinematic and map at this year's Gamescom, or are you like me, and there's a part of you that hungers for more? Now the next story that we're going to cover today is the controversy surrounding the new AI learning tool for Overwatch called Visor. Now if you've not heard of what Visor is or what it does, I'll just summarise it quickly here for you as best I can. Visor is a third party application which takes data from the game in real time and feeds it back to the player in potentially constructive ways. This includes dynamic stat tracking, but also things like actionable alerts mid-game while you're playing. Now these can range from the app telling you to help your healers more if it's tracked that they're dying early in teamfights, but it can also try and potentially warn you of upcoming ults from opposing players. And it's this part of the app's functionality which appears to be the most controversial. Now a lot of famous community members tested this app out recently in an effort, I think mostly, to see whether the app actually worked and would be useful to people. Streamers like XQC and Jane tried it, and in a lot of the examples that I saw, the app's actual practicality and accuracy of the information that it gave to players was quite questionable. But I think for a lot of the community, the discussion about these kind of tools doesn't end with, well, does it work? The conversation spreads out into, should players be using tools that could give them an in-game edge in principle? Would that not count as cheating in some way? Well, another quite famous streamer, Craigie, who is a former competitive player for the British Hurricane, has his own fairly clear-cut views about the subject, and I'll just play you a quick clip of him now talking about it. The, what cheating is in terms of Overwatch. Using a third-party program to automate any facet of the game. Doesn't... doesn't Visor... Visor is a third-party program. That's one. Doesn't it automatically track alt for you it does it automatically tells you if a fight is lost or won it gives you tips and tricks that normally you should you can only achieve by having game sense or game awareness so that's why it also gives an unfair advantage that's unfair advantage which is what it what it does I think a lot of the community's concerns, especially those within the competitive scene, is that they could make some players artificially better than they actually are, or to be more accurate, perhaps more efficient players. These tools are built to use information that every player has available to them in game, but they structure it in a way that's easier for players to interpret and understand. In a word, if they were to function well, which is still a bit up in the air at the moment, you could view them as shortcuts to hard-earned game sense. Now I can certainly understand why this is controversial, but I thought Jane's opinion on Twitter after testing it on stream was very interesting. He said, I'm not convinced that Visor.gg is good enough to be useful at the moment, let alone be considered cheating. But does it have the potential to be? Absolutely. Now Overwatch isn't the only game where app developers have tried to design tools to help players out. In Hearthstone there are several tools available that try to help you manage your deck, with some functionality arguably giving you an advantage in Arena. Now to give you my own opinion about this kind of thing, if I may for just a moment, I wouldn't use a tool like this in a competitive environment. If these tools did really work, they would certainly represent an advantage, and I would abstain from them for that reason, in the competitive spirit. But there there are a few side issues which I think are important. At their zenith, tools like this are supposed to be like a personal coach for a player. Do I think being coached well counts as cheating? No, I don't. But let's be real, traditional coaching doesn't usually happen in real time right in your ear as you're playing the game. That might happen in scrims, but certainly not in actual matches. And that's the part where it steps over the line for me. However, I do have to say, once a player reaches a certain level of skill, they will already be making use of all this in-game information for themselves. Themselves. They'll already know an enemy ultimate is coming, they won't need a bot to tell them so. You'll have to let me know how you feel about this kind of thing down in the comments section below. 
does using tools like Visor in competitive constitute cheating to you? Or do you see them as just another route to self-improvement? I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the Your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time, 